a principal insight of Ignatian spirituality is to examine ourselves. As we know, St. Ignatius Loyola and his insight is at the headwaters of Jesuit education. Uh, before he died, after 16 years as the Superior General of the Jesuits, uh, there were uh, 60 Jesuit educational institutions spanning uh, the world, literally, at that time. And at the heart of the Ignatian spirituality, which is at the heart of our Jesuit education, is the practice of examining oneself. We should do that, Ignatius says, often, twice a day if possible, once a week, once a month, yearly, and maybe at the end of a long life. Um, you ask your question, am I happy? Why? Am I sad? Why? What, what, what am I grieving about? What am I angry about? What am I grateful for? Go deep down into myself and touch my basic feelings. Because Ignatius felt when we do that, deep down in ourselves, we come in contact with God and a profound form of prayer. Um, my mother died when I was very young. I never knew my mother. So my family was Grandma Neenan, my dad, Uncle Frank, Aunt Marie, and Jack Shannon, my cousin. And I was surrounded by love. Um, I didn't know it at the time. It's sort of like a fish in water. You don't ask a fish, are you surrounded by water? They don't know, they won't know what you're saying. I wouldn't have known at that era if I was told you're surrounded by love because I just assumed that was the way it was for everybody. You might think back your earlier years. How were they? Were you surrounded by love? Uh, think about that. Maybe you weren't. That may be a reason to grieve, may be a reason to be angry, but enter in through that feeling. So I have a theme for that first stage. It's one of gratitude, great gratitude for my family, for my Catholic education, and for the dear friends that I made. Now you might think back to that stage in your lives. And I can remember, and this is the point, I think my vocation was confirmed, Eddie Deloge, Eddie Deloge, there were four or five of us, told a dirty joke. Now, I wish I could remember what it was. It probably wouldn't make the cut today. But in the, but in the context, it was a dirty joke. And I think, I think, my vocation might have been confirmed by that, because these were not a bunch of pious nerds. So thank you, Eddie Deloge. So I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to rejoice for this reason for the great providential care that God exercised over me in those earlier years, um, becoming um, at college, becoming a Jesuit, and having friends, these friends that I met who had gone to Jesuit high schools. If I hadn't got, met them, I might well not have become a Jesuit. Uh, so it's, I look on God's providence that guided me to be with these people that were very formative in my life. So gratitude for God's providence. Now you might, what about your lives? Many of you are here married. How did you come together? How did you meet each other? Why did you get married? What providential acts brought you together to this point in life today? And you might reflect on that. There is a guiding spirit, we believe, dear God, help our unbelief. So you might reflect on that as you think back on your life. I was dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. I did the dean's list. Um, and then they talk about the Flutie effect. Well, give me a break. Uh, we came the same year. <laughs> he left. God, we're still going up. I mean, uh, uh, that button, I like that button. Let's call it the Neenan effect, yeah. Um, and then um, uh, 
I became academic vice president, and then Father Leahy came, and sort of the Iowa takeover was complete. Um, and uh, two years later, I became an old man, and I got a job now called vice president and special assistant to the president. And I do, I essentially do two things. Well, I have got to go to these 15 luncheon clubs that I sponsor. The original and the elite one is the Iowa, Nebraska. Um, and I um, uh, travel around for advancement with handlers. I have handlers. Uh, I have one for each, there are about eight uh, for just in geographic areas. They have to rest after they take me out. So uh, they will, I will go to Chicago and I'll have one. Uh, Twin Cities, another, Washington, another, California, another. They come back and they collapse. And their main assignment is don't lose Father Neenan. Um, well, to be a little serious now, um, as Father Leahy said, one of the great goals of this capital campaign, and certainly a principal goal of his administration, is to strengthen the Catholic Jesuit nature of Boston College. And I alluded to the fact that there, are, there were 15 Jesuits getting doctorates at the University of Michigan when I was there. Uh, the numbers are way down. I don't know how many we have now, but I bet there are not many more than that across the country, let alone at one great university. Um, so the number of Jesuits are declining. It's arithmetic. It's, it's not wishful. You don't have to make a prediction. You just look at the numbers that are out there. Uh, so. Um, 30 years ago, we knew the numbers were there, uh, and I think a lot of people said uh, that's going to be the end of Jesuit Catholic education as we know it in the United States, and I might have gone along with it then. Today, I am more, much more hopeful that this institution, for example, and its Catholic Jesuit nature will be maintained when we're celebrating our 108th um, Laetare Sunday. Um, I hope I'm around next year. I know I won't be around in 108, um, but there are, I think, this institution, as I say, due to Father Lay's efforts and, and uh, colleagues, are, we're going to be a strong Jesuit Catholic University going forward. And I'm going to conclude now, if I may, with a psalm. Um, this, may, this is a psalm that I prayed early on in my life, maybe in chapel that night after I heard that dirty joke confirming my vocation as a Jesuit. It was about the time that we had our first Leitari Sunday celebration here at Boston College. That's a coincidence that struck me as I was preparing these remarks. It's uh, from the 27th Psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen.